In this video, I'm going to show you how to use white tie to build a NuGet package for your project. I've decided to use JSON.NET as an example because it already builds a NuGet package for its project using a custom script. And white tie can also handle all of the configuration choices that were made. So I want to show you how we can convert JSON.NET to use white tie to build a NuGet package instead of the custom script. So let's open up the solution. Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do to use white tie is add a NuGet package reference. There it is. So this is version 1.3.8, but you'll probably be using a newer version. So the first thing that you'll see is readme.txt is open, which provides some information about building a NuGet package and also building reference documentation, which I'm going to address in a subsequent video, and some additional links at the bottom. Okay, now that we've added a reference to white tie, if you were to build in debug mode, you would notice that there's no change. White tie has no effect in debug mode. So we have to switch to release mode, and that's by default. You can configure white tie to build in any mode that you'd like, but by default, it only applies to release builds. Now we want to enable NuGet package restore. This is also required in order to build a NuGet package. If we don't, then you could use WhiteTie's other features, but it just won't build a NuGet package for you. So I'm going to build the project for the first time in release mode. Now I've actually tested this already and I know that it's going to fail because of a, a uh, conflict with the documentation settings for building a, a documentation using Sandcastle. So the only reason why I'm showing this to you is so that in case you get the error, you'll understand what the problem probably is. Uh, you'll also notice that it's running code contracts because I have code contracts installed. So white tie automatically runs uh, three different static analysis tools if you have them installed. Code contracts, code analysis, which is already built into Visual Studio, and style cop. So I have code contracts installed in this computer, so it's running them. If you don't, then it won't run code contracts. Uh, style cop is not being used in this solution, so it's not running style cop. So there's our error. You can see, um, Oh, it just showed up in the error list, uh, SHFB, Sandcastle Help File Builder. And you, you have to go to the log to find the details of it, which is annoying, but you'll find the log file as a reference in the output window. Um, I wish Sandcastle actually gave us the real error in this window. That would be much more convenient. But nevertheless, it's still possible to find out uh, what the actual error is by, by digging through the output and then looking at the log file. That's something that uh, I will address in a subsequent video on how to build documentation using white tie. And I'm going to show how to convert JSON.net to, to use white tie to build documentation. So I'll address this issue in that video. For now, we just want to focus on building the NuGet package. So I'm going to disable documentation by editing the project file and editing a particular property that uh, disables building documentation in white tie. Let's add a new property group just to keep things segmented. Build documentation enabled, false. And I'm also going to go ahead and disable static analysis just for the sake of time in the video. But of course, I'd recommend uh, leaving it enabled for your own projects. So now that we've disabled documentation and static analysis, we can reload the project and build it again and verify that we actually get a NuGet package generated for us. There we go, it succeeded. So let's show all files and bin release. Uh, normally your output's in the release folder, but JSON.NET configures its project to build into a subfolder under the release folder. So we have to go into that. And here's the NuGet package it created. So let's open up the NuGet package explorer. Here on the left side, I have the actual NuGet package that JSON.NET uh, uses and deploys. And this is built using a custom new spec file with you know some values hard coded and a build script that was custom that runs the new spec file in order to build a NuGet package or you know passes the new spec file to NuGet in order to build a NuGet package. So that's the left side. This is really the target. This is what we want white tie to, to build for us. So let's see what white tie built out of the box without any configuration. Uh, we'll go to the source folder, bin release, and here's the package we just built. So immediately, immediately you'll see some differences. On the right side, we're missing some content. And on the left side in the metadata, you'll see we, we uh, have some differences, like the version number is wrong. Uh, authors and owners are wrong. Uh, we're missing tags. Uh, we're missing the license terms and the package information. We have added a copyright and summary. So that's nice. Why I actually add some stuff that wasn't hard coded uh, in the original new spec file. And uh, the descriptions are identical. 
So in order to resolve these problems, we will go to the place where we have all the assembly attributes defined. And the first thing we want to do is solve the version number conflict. So we'll say assembly info, assembly informational version. That's it, 6.0.3. So that matches the value in the target NuGet package. Uh, so what Whitetie does is it uses the informational version if it's specified. Otherwise, if it's not, it uses this version. So that's why before we saw that the, the result was 6.0.0.0. So that's the first thing. Um, the other thing is that we wanted to do, we wanted to fix some of the other attributes like the authors and owners. So it grabs them from the company attribute, but we don't want to actually change the company attribute. This is part of the DLL. Let's not touch this stuff. Let's just override these values uh, by explicitly setting them in the project file as uh, MS build properties. So you can of course edit the attributes or add the attributes if you don't have them. But if you already have the attributes like we do here and you just don't want to change those values so that, you know, they're a particular value in the assembly, but you want the NuGet package to have a different value, then we could just add uh, settings here in the project file. So I've already done this, so I'm just going to copy this code snippet so you don't have to watch me type it. So authors and owners, new spec authors and new spec owners specifies their respective properties in the NuGet package. And then project URL, license URL, and tags Likewise, uh, the difference is that these two were, are pulled from the assembly company attribute, but not anymore because we're actually explicitly specifying them in the project file. And these, if in order to have them in the NuGet package, you have to specify them in here. There are no assembly attributes uh, from which these values can be grabbed. So now we have uh, completed the metadata. I'm not going to build it, but you know, just trust me on that. That if we were to build it now, you'd see all the all the information on the left side. Uh, matches the, the information on the right side, including we'll, we'll also have the copyright and summary as additional metadata. Um, so now on the right side, we're missing the tools and uh, that's easy enough to do. We actually have to add an item group. So I have one right here. Uh, NuGet package allows you to include any files you want into the NuGet package. And I know this is where the install script is located. So I have a little relative path to point to the install script uh, relative to this project, the new newton project. And then the package target metadata allows you to, to specify which subfolder in the NuGet package uh, will contain the file that's being packaged. So in this case, we want to move this into the tools folder in the package. And by default, if you don't specify this, it's just moved it to the lib folder. So uh, that's that. And last but not least, if we expand the lib folder, you'll, you'll see that we're missing all the target flavors. I call them flavors. Uh, they're target framework flavors. So we have net 4.5 because that's what JSON.net, uh, the project that we open, builds. But we want to add all these other flavors as well. So we could do that by adding another item group. And here it is. And the item name is NuGet Flavor. And you can include project files. And the reason why there's no path on these project files is because the way JSON.NET does it is there are multiple project files in the same folder and they all share the same source code. I don't recommend doing it that way. I prefer the linked, uh, using linked files in separate projects. And there's a few reasons for that. The first is that, uh, you can't build the project. Uh, you can't build all the projects at the same time doing it this way because they'll, tr they'll trample on each other, you know, stop on each other's intermediate output. <clears throat> so you'll get errors like files in use and so on. That's if you're building in parallel. Uh, so that makes it kind of inconvenient. You can't really build all of them at the same time. So you have to build them linearly, which is also okay, but MS build is configured generally to build in parallel by default. So you might have to do a custom build script that builds one at a time and it's a little bit of a pain. And there's uh, ways around that, of course, anyway. You could configure the intermediate paths to be different in each project, but it's jumping through hoops. Uh, obviously, there are disadvantages to using link, linked files. I understand that, but I feel that the trade-off uh, makes it uh, actually much more desirable to use linked files. There's another problem with this approach, though, as well, which I'm not going to get into yet. You'll see that in a moment when, once I uh, build this and when we see that the result is not quite what we want. But it's easy to work around, so I'll show you how to work around that as well. So let's reload the project now. and test what we've done and make sure that we're in a good state. So building is going to take a little longer now because we're not just building this project. Now, every time we build this product in release mode, it's also building all the flavors in, in, uh, that we've configured in the uh, project file. So that's like seven different projects. So it's going to take longer to build than, uh, than before. And again, this only applies to release builds. So in debug builds, it's not going to build all these flavor projects, only in release mode for this particular project. 
okay and it looks like it's done so uh, actually we can go right to the package explorer <clears throat> and let's open it up again oh yeah this was the this was the old one we built I'll go ahead and delete those because we don't care about that anymore okay so here's the new one and you can already see that the version number matches so we look on the left side uh, we have all of the matching metadata that we expected, plus the additional copyright and summary information, plus a bunch of filtered assembly references, which I'll explain in a moment, and the tools matches and the libs match. Um, now, there's actually one subtle difference here that you might not spot. One of the lib folders is actually uh, in uh, doesn't match. So the one on the right side, you'll see uh, this matches Silverlight 5 in Windows Phone 8. Whereas this one says Civilite 4 in Windows Phone 7. And as it turns out, white tie is actually correct. I took a look at the source code before and I realized that this project actually targets Silverlight 5 in Windows Phone 8. So that's why white tie chose this string. This string, which is actually invalid, uh, was hard coded into the new spec file. So you can see that's an advantage of white tie that you don't have to make these sort of error prone hard coding mistakes. So this DLL actually targets Silverlight 5, not Silverlight 4. Now, there's a problem though with the script on the right hand side, which is that you'll notice we're not missing, we're, we don't have the XML files. So we're missing the XML files in, in some of these folders. And we have it in this one, Net45, which is the original one we built. The reason for that is that Net45 was built in release mode, whereas all the flavors are built in debug mode, because that's their default configuration. And that's another problem, as I was saying before, it's another problem with having all the products in the same folder you can't add them to the same solution because then the build output will trample on trample on each other when you try to build the solution uh but it's the solution that controls the default configuration of the projects uh not the default but the current configuration of the projects so uh just looking at the solution as a reference here you'll see that we have just this one dotnet 45 targeting project in this solution if we were to add the other flavors to the solution and build they'd trample on each other's output and you'd have like things like file and use errors and so on um uh, but the reason why we have to do that is because the solution controls the configuration of all the projects. So we want all the flavors to be built in release mode, but we don't have that information here because they're not in the same solution. Now, there's actually a quick fix so that way you could keep this model where all the projects are in the same folder. But you just have to be aware of it. And that's to change the default configuration of the projects from debug to release. And it's easy enough to do. You just open up the project files. So we're going to open up every project file except for the one that's in the solution at the moment. So these are, these are all the ones we already added as flavors. And we're going to change the default configuration up here at the top from debug to release. Let's go do that for all of them. And this shouldn't have any effect on your normal build scenarios. Um, most of the time you override these by using a global uh, property, an MS build global property like configuration and platform generally to hard code like a particular platform and configuration for every project. But we can't do that when we're building from Visual Studio. So just by setting the default, now uh, that solves our problem. And most likely it's not gonna affect any of your other build scenarios. So let's just uh, actually build this again and see if uh, that corrected the problem. Okay, there we go, it's done. Okay, so now we can open up the NuGet package and verify that it is identical. So now we have XML files. Perfect. So it built all of the flavors in release mode. So now we have all of the NuGet flavors correctly uh, included into our NuGet package, just like the original one. And the only other thing that's different here is these filtered assembly references, which are actually identical to not specifying the references in this particular scenario. Uh, White tie is just more explicit about it and it adds all the references explicitly. So there you have it, two relatively identical NuGet packages with a couple of corrections that white tie made for you and some uh, additional metadata like copyright and summary which weren't in this original file and it was very easy to do you just had a reference to the white tie NuGet package and if you have to uh, you could add some you can edit the, edit the project file to add some configuration properties that will include some metadata or include target framework flavors as needed so I hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching in the next video I'm going to show you how you can build documentation using white tie and specifically I'm going to use json.net as another example of how to convert an existing open source project to use white tie to build documentation instead of a separate Sandcastle help file builder project file.